say like there's two things you could do like when you get up in the morning you could go and chase your adrenaline or you can go chase your comfort yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. so uh, hey everyone this is Joey this is Hater and today we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about hitchhiking across the US I just wanted to, I just wanted to get out there and hitchhike across the world, you know, wow. just to be free, just to be free on that and not go outside yeah. and, you know, be in the wilderness or just be outside. Yeah, that, that's a key point, man. There's two things you could do, like, when you get up in the morning. You could go and chase your adrenaline, or you can go chase your comfort. I just believe I keep my head high and walk tall and just maybe say a little prayer here and there and just yeah. someone eventually would pick me up. You know, and I've been in some bad spots, like 26 miles from the nearest town with nothing around me. Yeah. And thinking, man, why do you do this? But then I just back, go back to being positive, like, you know? Just, yeah. So let's talk about prayer. What has been like a story of time? Tell me one story where you were stranded and then you said a prayer and then something happened. Yeah, yeah. A guy gave me a ride in Georgia, like, like 20 miles in the back of his truck. Yeah. And then he drops me outside. It was way across Georgia, and he's like, the cops will mess with you, so I'm going to drop you off here. And there's, like, no gas stations, nothing around me. I didn't have my cardboard on my back. You know, I write the name of the next town I'm going to go to. Yeah. So I'm walking down the road. Bam, I look to the ground. So tip, tip number one for hitchhikers, write the name of the town you're going to go to on the back of your backpack. And that way, people will see it, and they say, "Yeah, they because if they don't, you don't have that. They don't know how far you're walking. You could be walking a mile or hundred miles, or just be walking for the, the heck of it, you know? Yeah. And that's really helped me out. Okay, so this this, this is what we're gonna call this, right? This is hitchhiking tips with Tater and Joey. <laughs> yeah. So number one, so have the name of the town you're gonna go to in the back of your backpack. That's the first thing. All right. <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> right, the number two, okay. And so the, the prayer, okay, prayer story, right? So you got dropped off. Yeah, yeah. And then I was uh, walking like half a mile and I seen a piece of cardboard laying on the side of the road. Like it was meant to be there. So I grabbed it, wrote the next town on. Yeah. And I walked like two miles and a guy pulled over. He's coming home from work and gave me a ride that 26 miles that I thought I was going to have to try and walk. Wow. And it was like 7, it was 7.30 at night, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's so, a long 26 miles. And I've never had to sleep on the side of the road yet because someone's always picked me up. You just believe, you know. Yeah. If you think positive, good happens. If you're down on yourself, yeah. then you're not going to go nowhere in life. Wow. And I could, yeah, you know, get hit by a car or something like that, you know. Because oh, hitchhiking, the most dangerous part of hitchhiking is walking down the roads. Yeah. You're more likely to get killed by a car than you are to get killed by picking, someone picking you up. Wow. I did this. I read online a little too about my. About my journey before I left. Yeah, because that's dangerous. You could be walking on the side of the road and then somebody's not looking. Yeah. And they just veer off the road just like for a second. I've done that before. I just veered off and I got in. I like I crashed my car. I flipped it on on a road because like I just I was on my phone. Yeah, yeah. And so like somebody could do that. Like yeah, yeah I just wanted to. I just wanted to get out there and hitchhike across the world. You know. Wow. Just to be free. Just to be free. Okay. And also to prove that there's still nice people in this country. Yeah. And I have some friends and family that said I couldn't do it. They doubted me.